Hey everybody, it's Mr. Bone here. I'm um, going to go through how to do a six frame summary with you. We haven't done one, one yet this year, so I thought that I would uh, help you with the directions. Uh, I apologize for reading the directions to you when I know you can read, but I hope that I can add a, one or two things that would help you understand them a little bit better. So we'll start here at the top with the folding, and I also have a video that goes along with this that shows uh, how to fold it. But uh, a couple important things, uh, each of you will get only one piece of paper, the big paper. Um, we don't order enough for everyone to try two or three mistakes and just keep throwing them out because you don't feel like uh, fixing it. So you get one. If you screw up too badly, don't forget you will end up having two sides to this paper and you only need one. So that actually gives you a lot of chances to uh, fix things on the other side if you need to. Uh, you're going to fold the paper lengthwise hot dog style. I like to say that for uh, Mrs. Woodcock. Uh, ask her. She enjoys it when I say that. And then number three, you're going to use a ruler and measure six inches along the edge of the folded paper. And at those points that you marked, you're going to fold in and end up with one six inch square piece of paper. Again, this is going to be in a video to show you. Uh, so if just reading it doesn't make much sense. Uh, I'm sure that um, looking at the video will help or I hope it does anyway. So what are you going to do? You're going to find six items of interest to you in chapter seven or 11 if you're in Mrs. Pedley's class. Um, they could be vocab terms, pictures, maps, graphs, or just things that we talked about as part of the chapter. Uh, for instance, if we've taken a look at any videos or anything like that, um, you could use parts of those things. But the important part is try to think of things that you think might be on the test. After all, this is part of your reviewing for the test. It's to help you get ready for the test. And it's not just something to, to take up some time during the week. So try to think of things that you think might be on the test. Take a look at the Cahoots. Take a look at Quizlet. Take a look at the Jeopardy. All the things that we posted for reviewing. And maybe pick some of those items. Make a list of those items on a separate piece of paper so that you know exactly which ones you're doing and that you've spelled them correctly. You're gonna see in a little bit that spelling is gonna be extremely important. So probably getting them written down on a piece of paper, spelled correctly, is a great next step for you. Then you're gonna make a drawing in each of those frames. And the drawing should show that you know what the meaning of the word is. You do not need to write a definition. The picture itself should be your definition. Um, you may need to show some action or use thought bubbles to clarify your drawings. Um, I'm going back many chapters actually into the other book. If you were going to put something like a, a president or a dictator or something like that, you might want to draw a figure and you can use stick figures. It's perfectly fine to use stick figures. But maybe you need to draw a, a call out bubble that explains something like, you know, oh, hey, the people voted for me because I'm the president. Or on the other hand, it could be um, I I'm taking charge because I'm the strongest, I'm the dictator. So those kinds of things could help Mrs. Peddlety and I both understand that you really know what the meaning is and not just draw a picture of a person with a top hat and say, well, that's a president because he has a top hat. That doesn't really show that you know what it means. Last at the bottom, you're going to label each of your items. Uh, for example, in this chapter, maybe you chose tributary as one thing to draw. And so at the bottom of that that box, you would write the word tributary. And again, make sure it's spelled correctly. Now, how do we grade it? Well, you need to fill each of those frames that you've made. Um, don't make a tiny little drawing at the bottom and expect full credit. Um, you get a six by six inch square and you need to fill it up the best you can. Um, you need to color each of the frames. Coloring has to be in each frame. If it's not, it doesn't get full credit. Colored pencils or whatever Mrs. Pedley might use are also going to be provided. Number three, you need to spell your term or idea correctly. Copy it from the book if you need to. Um, I, I realize not everybody's great at spelling, but everybody can take a look in a book and copy one letter at a time and make sure you've got it spelled correctly. Because if you don't, that's a five point deduction. And you're gonna see in a, in a few minutes, that's, that adds up pretty quickly. Uh, number four, you need to be neat in your work. Do not slap a few lines together and expect full credit. Uh, erase completely if you need to do so. Uh, you know, don't, 
don't decide, oh, that's not quite right. And then you erase just part of it. So you still see a bunch of different lines and it looks messy. You know, if you have to erase, fine. But make sure you do it completely. Make sure it's all gone. Make sure it looks nice and neat. Um, neatness is the important thing. Um, and again, um, what you need to try to do is your best work, no matter what. So if your best work is stick figures, then fine. Make it stick figures, but make them neat stick figures. Number five. You need to make sure each frame is labeled correctly. So in other words, uh, don't put tributary at the bottom and have a picture of a lake or you know something like that because that's not correct. They need to match. Six, now I'm not an artist. I don't think Mrs. Pedley is a professional artist, so we don't expect you to be. Um, I do not grade on artistic ability, but I can certainly tell if you did not make a real effort to do your best. If you just slop something in, it is very, very obvious. And if you slop it in, you're going to get a sloppy grade. Number seven, you get 10 points per frame. Six frames make 60 points worth of an assessment. That's a test grade. Um, so again, if you miss five points because you don't spell anything correctly, you've gone from an A to an E on each of those uh, frames pretty quickly. So make sure you're doing all this Um to the best of your ability. Now, why are we grading so tough? Why is it that it's a five point deduction for spelling incorrectly? Because number eight, you're begin, being given a chance to earn 60 test points for simply coloring pictures, something you've been doing since kindergarten. Uh, so you need to make the most of it and be sure you're doing your very best and only the best efforts will be awarded the best grades. So make sure you take this opportunity. This should be, and what my seventh graders all realize at this point is that this is a great way to help build your grade or pad your grade if you've already got a good one. And they, at this point, take very full advantage of it, and you should too. So hopefully this helps you understand what you need to do. I'm sorry I can't be there to tell you in person today, but uh, I think this should get it done for you. So thanks a lot.